What's up everybody, how's it going? So this video is gonna be the long overdue 50K subscriber special Q&A video. We're actually way past 50K subscribers now. I think we just hit 62K subscribers this morning. So first and foremost, I have to thank all of you. I really, really, really appreciate all of your support. It's incredible to see the channel grow and I really thank you from the bottom of my heart. So looking at the comments on the community post right now, there are 161 comments. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to go through all of them. I'm going to do my best to go through 20 to 30 if they can all fit in a 15 minute or so video and hopefully I cover as many different types of questions as possible. I did want to point out something, which is that there were a few comments on this community post. Some of them had a lot of upvotes or a lot of likes and they are no longer there. Like one of them was asking me a question, something along the lines of why am I a workaholic? And it had a lot of likes and I wanted to answer it, but I literally can't find it anymore. And I did not delete these comments. I don't know if the person who wrote these comments or the, the people who wrote some of these comments deleted them. Uh, I hope YouTube isn't deleting comments, but I apologize if your comment is no longer on the community post. I will, however, answer that one question about why I'm a workaholic. So without further ado, we are officially jumping into the Q&A. Are you French? Can you speak French in the video? Oui, je suis français. Je parle français parfaitement et peut-être que je devrais faire plus de vidéos purement en français. What algorithm would you bring to a desert island? Am I allowed to bring the almighty YouTube algorithm? Okay, if we're gonna stick to more academic algorithms, I think I would pick Yukonin's algorithm, which is a very complicated algorithm that allows you to build a suffix tree in linear time. I've never actually gotten around to reading a whole proof on how the algorithm works, but I guess if I'm on a deserted island, I've got nothing better to do, so. Time to read up on Yukonin's algorithm. And by the way, in a recent video, Erikto challenged me to save the trees by donating to this organization in the name of binary trees. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now, but Erikto, I challenge you to another Google coding interview. You've told us how to work for Google. What if we wanna work for you and your company? Well, first of all, Benjamin, I am absolutely humbled that you would want to work for me and for Algo Expert, assuming that's the company you're talking about. Trust that you will hear from me if and when we start hiring. How to get a girl as a software engineer. So this is really easy. All that you have to do is close your eyes and start imagining an algorithm that would return a girlfriend or a significant other. And if you imagine it hard enough, it just works. <laughs> I was wondering what sort of personal projects you would suggest which might catch the recruiter or engineering manager's eyes and which would help in demonstrating one's skills. So I made a video, it's one of my most popular videos on my channel, I think it's the fourth or fifth most viewed one, the projects that got me into Google, the software engineering projects. Go check it out, I give some tips there, like five tips on what makes a good software engineering project. I think it'll answer your question. Serious question, what hair product do you use? It's always well maintained. Well, thank you, Sumanto. One second. May I present to you the Axe Messy Look Flexible Paste Hair Gel. It's a, I don't know if you can see, it's a sort of matte finish kind of gel. Uh, the key thing is you don't want uh, the, the shiny kind of gel if you want this type of look. You go with a matte, sort of pasty kind of gel that doesn't feel like you have gel, and that's it. I give really quality life advice on this channel, don't I? Why are you such a fat, lisping, self-promoting pig? Whoa, Lonnie Bulldozer, let's slow down a little bit. I don't know, why are you such a fucking asshole? Now this is a good question. What kind of toilet paper do they have at Google? Is it quilted or is it truck stop grade single ply? You know, Mark, it's actually nothing extraordinary. It's actually quite disappointing given everything else at Google, which is, you know, mind boggling. Here, it's like they don't really invest in it. They don't really invest in 
quality toilet paper. Which CS fundamentals and in one depth are important for an entry level sweep position at FANG apart from data structures and algos? So the interesting thing here is that data structures and algos are actually the most important thing. Of course, I think you need a baseline level of programming knowledge. And then I would argue that some level of systems design knowledge would be very useful. It is important to note that for entry level positions, some companies like Google, for instance, won't interview you on systems design. They reserve that for more senior candidates, but other companies will. For instance, when I interviewed at Two Sigma, the hedge fund in New York City, I had a systems design interview and it was for an entry level position. What do you like more, entrepreneurship or software development? That's a tough one. I think it's gonna have to be entrepreneurship because it's just something that I've been obsessed with ever since high school. I would say that software development, software engineering, feels like a tool for entrepreneurship. That's the way that I view it. So it's supremely important for entrepreneurship, but it's not my end goal. I will say that software engineering or software development is one of the most empowering things in the world. And I've never found something uh, that matches it in, in terms of feeling empowered because you can basically build whatever you want within reason, of course. And also one thing that I'll note is that when I discovered coding, I realized that it was the one thing that I had been looking for all my life, so to speak, but never had found up until then, because I loved the fact that you can sit at your computer for hours on end in the wee hours of the night, and you can iterate on something and get immediate feedback. Like for instance, if you're writing an algorithm, you can, you can code out a solution, run it, see if it passes. Or if you're developing a website, you, know, you can, you can uh, create components and see them on the web page in real time. It's super rewarding. There are very few things out there that I had found that were comparable. One that was similar was video editing or you know, Photoshopping, for instance, which is something that is pretty fun and you get instant feedback as you're editing a video or as you're editing a picture in Photoshop. But with software engineering, there was something just so amazing about it. So that's my answer to your question. Are you an expert in algorithms? Do you know how to solve all of the ones on your website? You know, they don't call me the algo expert for no reason. I wouldn't call myself an expert in algorithms. I certainly have a lot of room to study more about algorithms, especially from an academic point of view. I will say, however, that I'm very well versed in algorithms in the context of coding interviews. And as far as can I solve all the questions on Algo Expert? Yes, I think I could solve all the questions on Algo Expert. A fun fact is that when I was preparing for my Facebook interviews a few months ago, six months ago now, I went on Algo Expert and I said, I'm gonna do just as many problems as I can. I ended up just doing 20 problems because I was only preparing for the coding interview portion for like a few days. I felt pretty prepared already because keep in mind, I've been living and breathing algorithm interviews for like two and a half years now, but I did do like 20 problems on Algo Expert in the span of a few days and, uh, you know, I was able to get them to pass. There were a couple where I was kind of, you know, tricked and stumped. I was like, huh, how, I was like, oh, I remember this is a, this is one of those problems that has a really unique solution. What was it again? And I would like rederive the pattern uh, pretty quickly. How do I get a girlfriend when I have approach anxiety? Mr. Mr. I'm about to give you two of the most important life tips ever. Number one, have you ever heard of that motivational quote, you miss 100% of the shots you never take? Yeah, it's true. And this applies to all aspects of life. If you try to launch a business, you might have a 90% chance of failure. If you don't try to launch a business, you're gonna have a 100% chance of failure. If you approach a girl, even if you have approach anxiety, you might have a 95% chance of getting rejected or turned down. If you don't approach that girl, you're gonna have a 100% chance of getting turned down. Point is, you should always try. Even if failure is very likely, it's less likely than if you don't try. Second piece of life advice. You are valuing other people's opinion of you so much more than your opinion of yourself, and you shouldn't do that. Value your opinion of yourself over other people's opinion of you and your life is gonna change dramatically for the better. If you're worried about what people are gonna think if you post that first video on YouTube or if you're worried about what people are gonna think if you approach this girl and she turns you down, don't. 
This has been Life Advice with Clement Mihalescu. Would you rather fight one horse-sized duck or a hundred duck-sized horses? Include the time and space complexity analysis in your solution. What a great question. You know, this might be the next question that we add on Algo Expert. I think I would have to go with a hundred duck-sized horses because one horse-sized duck just sounds terrifying. And if you think about it, assuming that it takes constant time to beat a duck-sized horse, then beating a hundred duck-sized horses is also going to be constant time. So that's a beautiful algorithm right there. And as far as space complexity, even if we're using recursion or something like that, I'm going to go with constant space. We've got a hundred duck-sized horses, constant space. How can I learn data structures and algorithms quickly? I'm a beginner, and if possible, what are some resources that you can recommend for me? Chandan, we are coming out with the data structures crash course very soon on Algo Expert. It'll be part of Algo Expert, so if you already own Algo Expert, you'll get access to it for free. Stay tuned. Okay, so that first question, which is no longer on the community post for whatever reason, asked me something along the lines of, why am I a workaholic? And there are really two reasons. The first is that I genuinely love the work that I do. If we take Algo Expert, for instance, it is the most fun and most rewarding thing I've ever done in my life. I love doing all kinds of work for it, whether it be front-end development, content creation, all kinds of administrivia, I love it. And as I'm sure you know, when you love doing something, you want to do it all the time. And it was the same thing when I worked at Google or at Facebook. The work that I did there was very fun, I really enjoyed it, and perhaps even more importantly, it felt very rewarding. It felt like I was working towards a goal. I was improving myself as a software engineer. There was, of course, the, the goal of getting promoted or of getting a good performance rating, which is a very good motivator for me. So that's why I put a ton of work there too. And then the second reason, and I've said this in other videos, is that there are a lot of things in life that you can't control. You can't control how tall you are, you can't control really your baseline intellectual capabilities, but what you can control is the amount of work that you put into an activity. And so for that reason, I often tell myself that I'm going to do whatever it takes to put the most work into something so that I can truly tell myself that I've done the best with what I've been dealt in life. These two reasons are why I'm a workaholic. A genie grants you three tech wishes. What are they and why? The first one would be to only have a single browser out there, and I would pick Google Chrome because cross-browser compatibility is a nightmare. The second one would be the ability to center an element using CSS very easily because right now it's not easy enough. I still don't know how to center an element in CSS. And the third one would be, you know when you ramp up to a new dev environment and you get it all set up and it's a nightmare to get it set up and nothing works and you always get errors that no one knows how to solve? Yeah, I wish setting up a new dev environment and ramping up to a new code base were somehow less frictiony. What would you do 10 days before your on-site coding interview? Apart from algo experting, of course. So algo experting should be your main priority, but then I would do a few things. First of all, I would probably read as much as you can about the company that you're going to be interviewing at. It's always good to know maybe other people's experiences interviewing at the company or little, you know, secrets or tidbits about the company, so I'd definitely do that during your free time. I would also, and this might seem like you know, very simple, uh, banal advice, but I would make sure to get your life in order, get your sleeping patterns in check, eat properly, because at the end of the day, the last thing that you want is for you to mess up the interviews because of something silly like, oh, you had shitty sleeping patterns during those 10 days and you were exhausted on the day of the interview. Oh, and last thing, there's this guy on YouTube, I forget his name, I think, I think his name is Clement, and his last name starts with an M and is pretty long. Yeah, he makes really cool videos about software engineering and coding interviews and all that, so definitely check out his videos during those 10 days. I'm 22 years old, about to graduate, I'm struggling with my health and obesity, and I'm thinking about not taking up a job for a year, taking a break, losing some weight, 
I'll still keep up learning skills, preparing for interviews, but will this affect my chances of landing a job? And I have friends who can refer me to Fang when I want. Listen, I think that this is definitely gonna be a personal decision for you. I would say at the end of the day, your health is probably the most important, or not probably, it is certainly the most important thing in your life. So put that above all else. And if you think that it uh, preparing for or, or landing a job is gonna detract you from that at this important time in your life, then yes, prioritize your health over landing the job. But if you keep preparing and you keep preparing for interviews, you keep learning new skills, that'll be great. And if you've got friends who can refer, refer you to companies, especially at FANG, then you're probably gonna be in good shape. But again, I think your health is probably the most important thing and it would be a good idea to focus on it. How much time do I have to code each day to be a good programmer in six months? My advice would be to code as much as possible. All right, that's gonna be it for this q and I hope that you enjoyed it. I'm sorry if I didn't get to your question. There were a lot of comments on that community tab. We will be doing another Q&A soon at the next big milestone, and I will see you in the next video.